<laughs> Hello and welcome. Like me, I bet you never thought that the Oculus Go would be able to play racing sims, but it can. Tinkering around yesterday with a couple of friends, I learned a method that allows you to use the Oculus Go as a totally capable and inexpensive option for jumping into sim racing. So I'm going to step through all the things that are necessary to be able to get to that point. My name is Zim, I've been sim racing for six years, and I've been a VR nutcase for at least the last five and a half. So I'm going to step you through um, why the Oculus Go is actually a perfect choice if you're sitting with a gamepad or a steering wheel, and you want to get into VR, and you're looking at either upgrading from a, um, a single monitor, multiple monitors, um, or you've just always wanted to dabble in VR, but you didn't have the money for it, this is a great option. It's only 35% of the cost of its big brother, the Oculus Quest. The Oculus Quest is currently retailing here in the UK for £399. That's $399 in the US. And if we look at the Oculus Go in comparison, um, and I'm sure some of you will be aghast at this point and saying, well, hang on, Zim, this is such a cut down headset, don't recommend this. Stick with me, I'll tell you why. All right, so £139 or $150, thanks to the recent price drop, Facebook had dropped, as reported here by The Verge, the Oculus Go to be only $50. Uh, sorry, $150. So with such a dramatic price drop, now you have a brand new device and used devices in the secondary market for even cheaper that you could use to race. But that's not all you're going to need. You still need one other piece. So. The total price, the total asking price here for the solution I'm going to show you um, is actually £165, roughly, um, or $170. So those are the two sets. So it's 100 and 150 US dollars for a go. It's $15 to $20 for a copy of Virtual Desktop that you'll need to use this solution. And it works very well. I've tested this. This is very cool. Uh, in pounds, that's 139 pounds for the Go, and 10 to 15 pounds for Virtual Desktop. Now you might ask me, what the heck is Virtual Desktop? Well, Virtual Desktop is an app that you can pick up on the Oculus Store. It's used to virtualize your PC's existing native desktop, but actually can also pass through controls. And the benefit of a game like Seto Corsa, for example, and other sim racing games, is their cockpit. So you're fixed in a cockpit, and you don't need the full six degrees of freedom or tracking motion, which is horizontally forward, back, up and down. You really just need point in place. Your head is there in the car, you tilt, you swivel, and that's all you need. Um, there's very little lost actually from like a Rift S experience. So I'll talk through some of the benefits of the solution, but I thought I'd first walk you through how it works and then get into the pros and cons about that. So, um, now let's go ahead and talk through how this works first, and then we'll come back. So the first thing you're going to need is you need a special version of Virtual Desktop. So you need to go to SideQuest. This is allowing you to sideload applications directly onto the device. You will need to use the cable that came with your Oculus Go, just a standard USB connection to the device, open up SideQuest, and after you've walked through their steps, which are visible here on this website, that takes probably about 15, 20 minutes to walk through. You sign up as a developer account, um, you, you connect your Oculus Go, it's picked up by your computer, and then you're ready to go to sideload apps. Now there's a bunch of very cool free apps on there, um, but I'm gonna focus on one paid app, which as I mentioned already, is Virtual Desktop. So the way this works is, you buy the vanilla version of Virtual Desktop, and then you sideload, almost like patching on top of it, uh, another edition of Virtual Desktop that isn't uh, generally made available on Oculus Home. So you buy Virtual Desktop for the asking price on the Oculus Home Store on your Go, okay? Load up your Go or use your mobile uh, Oculus app to go ahead and purchase that. Then go to SideQuest and you sideload the application to, uh, to your Go. And the way you do that is you go to SideQuest, right? And I can show you here a live example from SideQuest. So you go to your side quest once it's uh, installed. It'll look like this at the, uh, I'll show you the home. 
So the home page looks a little bit like this. There's a bunch of apps listed, yeah. And all you have to do is go to games and apps, and then in the search, just type virtual desktop. There you go. You can see it's marked as a paid app. You click on that, and then with your Go connected, I can give you an example. Let me connect my Go. Let's see how long it will take to uh, pick up. Now I haven't, I don't think I've actually um, turned this on, so it'll take a little bit. And I'll just walk you through this. So once that's up and it's connected via the uh, SideQuest app, you just come over here, install latest, and then it will go ahead and sideload that for you. Once it's on, then you're ready to go on. So we've gone through step one, which is set up SideQuest. Step two, go to vrdesktop.net, and I will show you that now. So you go to vrdesktop.net, uh, which looks like this, and this is where you can download in this bright orange button, download streamer app. That's the app that's gonna sit on your computer and listen uh, and send data back and forth from your Go over your wireless network, okay? So with the streamer app installed, what you can do is um, you can actually connect to your computer. The first thing you're gonna have to do though is you're first going to have to uh, set up the streamer app once it's installed. Like I've demonstrated here, my Oculus username is ZimTalk5 and then you configure the options here and it's just running. Now I'm running on a 1080 and this is run perfectly silky smooth, fantastic, at about medium quality settings in the app. And I'll talk through a little bit of that in detail a little bit later on. Right, so step one, we've done the side quest. Step two, we've got the streamer app. Step three, we've purchased virtual desktop in the Oculus store. Notice the difference, there are two different versions. Um, it probably won't confuse you because you've only got the Go in front of you. Uh, just don't go buying it if you're an existing like Rift owner. Uh, don't go buying it on the Oculus Store for desktop by accident. And the same thing is for you if you're a Steam user. So you want to buy it on the Oculus Home Store. That's the mobile version that supports the Go and the Quest. So once you've done that and you've side-loaded via SideQuest the virtual desktop application, which is, as I said, is a special version that allows you to connect to SteamVR, which will let you run your racing game, I'll take the example of Assetto Corsa as an example. That's my favorite VR racing game, and it's what I've tested and proven works well. So uh, once you've put your ID, right, back under this little app, once you've put your Oculus ID into this application, then the two should be able to connect. So what you need to do is make sure your Oculus Go is connected to the same wireless network as your PC. Now, while I recommend a five gigahertz uh, 5 gigahertz connection on your Wi-Fi router. 2.4 does also work, just not as well. Okay, um, you might have the option on your router if you're a power user to go and disable the 2.4 gig network, but if all this doesn't mean much to you, don't worry about it for right now. Okay, now what you do is you go on to, uh, you go to Steam and open that on your desktop. Go ahead and launch Steam on your desktop. It will just open as normal. You don't launch Steam VR from your desktop. What you do is you go into your Oculus Go and you launch Virtual Desktop. And once launch, once Virtual Desktop is running and can connect and can see your computer, you've proven the network connection is okay. You should be able to see uh, at least one monitor when you connect. And then after you've done that, uh, you launch Virtual Desktop on Go and then you press the back button, which is this small little button above the Oculus logo on the remote and that will slide out a menu which has settings in it and, and your computer. So it will tell you what kind of connections under computers, uh, what you're connected to, and then it also uh, will allow you to change some configuration settings. So all that we care is there's a big black button that says launch Steam VR, and we launch Steam VR with this. Now that Steam VR is connected and running, it will recognize the headset. It's kind of a generalized headset. It'll pop up and show Steam VR running. It'll have a couple of icons, C, R, et cetera, for the controller, the headset, et cetera. And then once you've got that, then go ahead and go to your, uh, go to uh, Assetto Corsa or Content Manager, if you're a user of Content Manager, and go ahead and go into this app. 
Okay, so this is Content Manager showing behind me. Highly recommend this if you're a Seto Corsa user. Okay, so what you're gonna do here is if you're an existing Oculus user, you might have the wrong settings set up. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and show you here where you need to go once you're in here. Okay, so what we're gonna do first, you go ahead and click on settings, then Assetto Corsa video, and then down here to rendering mode. Now rendering mode gives you a couple of different options. So for these options, there's single screen, triple screen, Oculus Rift, and Open VR. Now I'm typically using a Rift S when I'm playing a set of Corsa, and the game knows to use the Oculus Rift runtime to be able to connect to it graphically. So what I want to do is instead of that, because I'm going to be connecting through Steam VR, I instead want to use Open VR to allow my Oculus Go to connect instead. Um, this should probably already be in use for you if you're like a Vive or an Index user, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. But for Oculus existing users, you'll need make make sure that the Open VR is used. Now you can select this as well in a set of Corsa in the usual settings menu. But I find Content Manager, which is like a um, it's a separate launcher for a set of Corsa, is really really handy. Now I skipped over the fact that we could um, actually pick this up. I'll just go ahead and show you there now. So Content Manager is a free alternate launcher for Assetto Corsa, and it's fantastic. Like, I love this app. I absolutely sign my soul to it. It is fantastic. I've paid for the paid edition, which is just a few tweaks and, and, and tunes, but really just to pay back to the developer. I, it's so much faster to launch into games, easier to configure settings, and like I will share in the description, I can share my configuration for Oculus Go that works really well, so you can just import it with one click if all you also use Content Manager. Definitely recommend it, absolutely recommend it. And you'll never have to pay a penny for it. You can just uh, download and use it. So that's Content Manager. Now, now that we've got Content Manager running and we're basically ready to go, um, we're gonna go ahead and, let me just go ahead to drive it online here. So once we're here, down towards the bottom, there will be a join button and I'm ready essentially now to join it. Steam VR has my Go registered and it knows it's there. In the headset, I may need to use the back button to slide out that panel for options because I loaded Steam VR and what would be really handy is if I'm able to put the headset on first and then with the headset on, just browse, browse for myself uh, to the same thing we can see on screen here, right? And then select the server I want to join and click join. But I can only do that if I'm in desktop mode. So again, use the back button to press and get the slide out panel for desktop mode. And then you can select, click and join the server. Now it'll launch and a set of course it typically launches in like a 2D mode. And I will demonstrate this for you via a couple of videos I captured earlier. So you can see what that looks like as well. Now, in terms of in terms of finishing off the steps. Right, so once you're confident that the Steam VR is seeing, seeing your quest and virtual desktop is working well, you can just launch, launch right in. Now there's a couple of settings um, for connecting in terms of refresh rate and uh, bit rate, things like that. Um, those you will wanna play around with. I've found medium settings generally work very well. And again, on a 5G network uh, that I've used. Like it's no different me using the Go than it is me using an Oculus Rift. I'll talk a little bit about quality differences, but in terms of the performance of the headset being fast, able to drive, apex into corners, all that kind of stuff, no problem. Right, so the next thing we want, um, that's it, basically. You've, you've, you've gotten in, you're able to race, it just switches into VR mode, or you can press the back button and say switch to VR, and you should be in full control, seated in a cockpit. Let me show you what it looks like, just as an example uh, from something I captured uh, recently. So we're gonna go ahead and go for this one. There we go. Here's an example of what it looks like in the Oculus Go. This was natively captured on the Go, so you can get a flavor for the kind of detail level if you're used to a, I don't know, highly uh, high fidelity Assetto Corsa. You can notice that things are a little bit muddier. The colors aren't quite right, um, but it's working. It's working and you know the head movements are all picked up. What I don't have is, I don't have six degrees of freedom. I don't have the ability to um, move my head around, look at the gears and stuff like that. And I will compare and contrast against the Oculus Quest, which has six degrees of freedom uh, a little bit later.
Okay, so that's one example. So we'll leave that for now. Now, let's go ahead and show you side by side. Oculus Quest and Oculus Go. Right, so here's these two, starting off from about the same. Uh, on the right side, I hadn't recentered myself, so I'm a little bit closer into the wheel. Um, the other thing I would say is that the Quest is definitely sharper um, in terms of its panel, its display, actually more so than the default resolution on paper, the specs uh, would say, you would think that the Go would be a little bit more comparable. Actually, the game looks way nicer in the, in the Quest for me, to my eyes, but there's a big problem, and I'll talk about that in a minute, with um, distortion that isn't for some reason captured here. And I actually fingered the blame to open VR, but the point I'm trying to make for you is the quest is plagued by that distortion, which I think I, I would not be comfortable playing with. The Go is not. The Go for me worked perfectly with the open VR support, and it is a cheap headset, and it's amazing that it can even do this. So let's go ahead and show you how these two look running side by side. All right. So, and you can see the kind of level of detail, for instance, uh, that we have on the quest. Let me just go ahead and pause the left video here so that the uh, quest runner can go ahead and catch up. Now, I don't think I run exactly the same, but you can kind of get a flavor here for what the difference is between the Go and the Quest. You can see a level of detail more in the Quest, but as I said, it's plagued by a funky distortion. It makes you feel like you're um, looking at a 3D video player or something. So actually, I would not, for two reasons, due to the weight of the headset and also due to uh, the... Uh, uh, just due to the, the comfort factor, the fact that it's a heavier headset, I wouldn't use a Quest. Uh, whereas the Rift S is fine for me and I'm, I'm kind of used to that. Now one of the things you're seeing on the right side here is a stutter. Um, that can happen on, on wireless networks, but didn't happen to me very often. On the left you see my Go is going perfectly nicely. The colors aren't quite right. Things like look a little bit muddy, um, and I would say in the headset they actually got the shade worse than they do there. But again, for the money, it's 35% the cost of the headset of the Quest. It's nuts that you can get that level of quality uh, in that headset, and that works. That is absolutely bonkers, to be honest. Uh, so that's that. That's those things. Um, right, so that's those. So what else can I say about all this stuff? I wanted to also share with you... Um, uh, so we're going to go back here to the Go. So what, what are the problems and the challenges that we face? A few other key points I wanted to, to kind of talk to just to make sure that you're aware of this before we move on. So firstly, right, Quest versus Go. I didn't find the Quest comfortable at all running a set of course uh, through virtual desktop. I don't know if it's the bigger demand in terms of the slightly bigger resolution uh, churning on it. There was a, a like a barrel distortion warping uh, or a spherical distortion warping that really didn't feel natural. Didn't feel like using a VR headset and I would not recommend Quest for this method. Um, the Go on, on the other hand worked perfectly except for discoloration, so fun, kind of funky colors, um, some amount of artifacting, but honestly for me, totally acceptable level of artifacting. Um, and actually for a, a budget entry into VR racing, this thing is gonna get last you about 60 to 90 minutes on the battery based on the testing that I've done. And that's pretty decent for the money, especially if you can find a used one or a secondhand one. All right, the other thing I'm gonna mention is the weight of the headset. This is so light, it's one of the most comfortable headsets I own. Um, it's more than 100 grams uh, lighter than the Quest, actually. And for that, I love it. The other thing that I would say is, if the battery is a problem for you, you can always just easily tap in via a USB lead to like a battery pack you, you already own, um, or a USB connection on your PC. It's actually not difficult. And because of where it comes out from the headset, you actually don't feel it when you're driving, uh, which is fantastic, because it means you can't just go and go and go until such time as this guy uh, was to overheat. So it can have that problem. Um, but if you're if you're streaming with, a, as I said, medium settings in terms of refresh rate and that, and you're not trying to push it through virtual desktop because there is an option to boost the clock, then it's actually fine. And it will actually dissipate heat uh, normally through the front panel. So that's that. But as I said, I would say you'll get between 60 and 90 minutes. Uh, don't expect a full shelf life at the go, which is usually a little bit more than two hours. Um, in terms of gaming uh, on it that way. 
So that's that, but great price, really fantastic price. So I mentioned already the differences between three degrees of freedom and six degrees of freedom. That's an important thing. I mean, comparing it to the Oculus Quest, if you're looking to do other gaming and you have a bit more money, definitely the Quest hands down is the, is the, is the one to, you, to go for. If you're looking specifically for sim racing, budget entry, bit of watching Netflix and stuff like that, the Go is amazing for that. And as I said, you can probably pick it up secondhand. The other use cases that I think would work well, but I have not yet tested, I think Elite Dangerous might work quite well, actually, uh, because it's three degrees of freedom, again, in terms of where you're sitting. So I think with a HOTAS uh, throttle and stick, I think you would actually be able to get a fair amount of gameplay out of that. Um, now, all of this is hinging off of virtual desktop. Now, I'm, I've been a big fan of virtual desktop for some time. Uh, if you're not comfortable with virtual desktop, if you're not comfortable with SideQuest, then there is probably something in this that... Um, is a stopping block for you. But I think both of those apps are absolutely fantastic um, and definitely for the price of entry. This is amazing. A couple of other notes in terms of if you're a sim racer and you tend to use like Discord for voice chat, um, the microphone on the go can be used. Now it's a bit muffly. It, it sounds a little bit like um, if someone's on a mobile phone and kind of a mm, medium strength reception area, it's not like it's not great like you would have on a, like a gaming headset or uh, you know a standalone microphone, but it works. And you can literally pipe all the audio from your desktop here. You don't need extra headphones necessarily, um, and there isn't audio bleed that we've detected. And I can talk back to the other racers on the circuit that way as well, which I find to be pretty awesome. So there's that. Um, we've covered off battery, but you can also connect to the mains if you want to. So mains supply, you can always connect to that lead as well. Um, and I think personally, this is cheaper and more immersive, whilst not as detail rich uh, as a three, a three monitor setup for driving. So I find this, this is like the coolest thing that I've, I think I've found in the last couple of years, just in tinkering and testing different combinations. And I wanted to share that with you. Um, the biggest downside I would say at the moment uh, is going to be the kind of slightly muddy look to the display. But again, I will um, I will collect some feedback about some people who aren't me um, who test this solution, and then we can feed those back. If you've tested it and you want to put your comments in chat, please, or in, into the comments, please do. Um, I will include all the links that I've showed today in the description so you have an easy access to all the things you're going to need. And in addition to that, uh, I would also mention that in terms of the Go, when you're going, hey, what should I go for? Actually, the 32 gigabyte size is plenty, even if you're planning to do some pretty heavy gaming in terms of purchasing games for the Go and using it for something like a set of course or racing. I, I think the 32 gigabyte uh, edition is plenty for you. So I wouldn't be, don't be uh, incentivized to go for the 64. I'd say just, just stick with the 32, pick that up, <laughs> pocket the rest of the change, use it on something else. Now, I do wholly recommend if you're getting into sim racing, you can start a course with a PC connected like Xbox controller, but um, getting a decent wheel setup is quite important. Now wheels are not cheap, right? It's gonna cost you more than the package of the Go and virtual desktop, but for the immersion, um, I would recommend either a, a Logitech a G920 or G29, which is the current edition, in front of me is at the G27, which is no longer in production. So um, this also helps you with a, another little problem. If you were looking to maybe pick up a, a Quest, those are sold out in a couple of regions at the moment. So the Go isn't. Um, it just got a price drop, and I think it's a hot tamale for this application. It's pretty nifty. Finally, if you do get into this and you do get into sim racing and you'd like a little bit of uh, help, learn what's good, all that kind of thing, like I had at the start of the video, uh, we've got a website, which is just sitting at zimtalk5.com slash AC, AC like uh, temperature dial on your wall, uh, for a set of Corsa, of course. And on here, uh, it gives some links to, firstly, the base Assetto Corsa game, which is usually pretty cheap. It's usually like sitting at $15, but you can find it on sale for like five. Um, track pack, there's a whole bunch of mod tracks that are easy. You just drop them into a tracks folder, loads of stuff to, to race, and as well, a list of servers here that we um, are currently hosting. I'm currently hosting 55 different uh, servers. And we've got loads of stuff there for people to be able to go ahead and race. So I just realized that I had my uh, Oculus Go and Oculus Quest labels on all that time. Sorry about that. 
So aside from that, um, thank you everyone for uh, hanging with us. I think this has been a fun one. I hope to see you on the track uh, right. with the Oculus Go. Oh, it's yeah. finished. Yeah, absolutely who, uh, who brilliant. Won? Right. Uh, I think I will. Well, we will, uh, we will see you again. Um, and as I said, if you're an Assetto Corsa fan already and you're not yet using Content Manager, absolutely do that. So hopefully that uh, was helpful, pushed you in, in the right direction, and uh, you'll consider yourself an Oculus Go. Cheers.